All right, everybody, it's Danny Hogger Podcast in the middle of another week at home and trying to make the best out of it to talk to the best and most creative people that we can. Part of the most loved third wave ska band of all time with hits like Superman here in your bedroom and more off the knife in 2017, a really great recent album. Man, there's been a lot of great stuff recorded from this group at home while they've been recording music and videos to check out their channel and their Spotify from Goldfinger, one of my favorite ska guitarists of all time. Charlie Paulson's here. How you doing, Charlie? How's your day? Good, man. You? Good, good. I'm, and I, like most of America, we're working out internet connectivity and hoping that uh, we can keep a stable Zoom meeting here. Charlie, when and why did you start playing ska guitar? I know a lot about your music, but I don't know a lot about you. Tell me about your musical upbringing. You know, that's funny. I don't, I don't think of myself as a ska guitar player at all. But, but I, I, I guess if I had to answer that question, it would be that I always liked playing R and B and and funky shit when I was growing up. I always loved Earth, Wind, and Fire and Parliament and bands like that. And uh, to me, and I think to most people, ska is dance. So, so you know, you just got to be locked in the pocket with your drummer and and make people move. If you can get feet moving, then you're doing your job. And that's you know that's I think that's that's part of what playing ska music is about. For sure. I think for some people, what what's impressive about your style to me is how much you can mix up like a heavy, heavy chord riff and then a really sweet, you know, lead part and then go back to the rigid, quick timings on some of the songs that are in the more in the ska realm. But what's your, your maintain of stamina and training like for your dexterity? How'd you build up that that ability is it daily practice? Are there drills that you do? You know, what's what's your go to method? It's yeah, it's just playing a lot. You know, and uh, and I downpicked using my arms mm-hmm. for years, and until I uh, realized that it's it's more in the wrist. Once you sort of figure that out, then it's a lot easier to maintain. You asked about stamina; it's easier to maintain downpicking and just playing that much and that hard for that long. But it is a whole different technique uh, learning to downpick and play with just your wrist as opposed to your whole arm that's that's a that's a cool thing to know that like you've got to keep that up and you guys have been you know in the studio and on the road for for decades the albums are so solid hang ups the third album that i ever bought in stores and so it has a special place in my heart and i know for thousands and you know millions of people is there an album that you feel like you began to define who you were as a guitarist and how you really felt like you're putting your stamp on it more than ever because you seem to have it out of the gate uh yeah I, uh it's funny that you say that because that record is 20 years old or something and mm-hmm. i just recently kind of came to the conclusion that uh that's probably our most important record to the people that like this band hangups is probably the one that seems seems to have had the, the, the most of, of an impact on people yeah. you know uh the first record i think sold the most but hangups was the one that people really took to heart you know what I mean? Uh, and as Love far it. as a guitar player, yeah, and it's, I mean, it's its stylistically, it's all over the place. So as a guitar player, it was really fun to work on that record. And I remember writing songs and, and coming up with my parts for that record. It was the first time that I had lived, uh, that I had lived by myself ever. I, uh, yeah, because I mean, you know, I'd never grown up, we'd never had a whole lot of money, so I never had my own space. And then, you know, uh, and then I was on the streets for a while. That was our second record. So I finally had enough uh, money for an apartment and everything. And I, and I could just sit by myself and just play guitar all day. Yeah. And I think that really helped with me being able to, to really sink my teeth into those songs and, and, and come up with parts and, you know, be creative. Yeah. Can you talk to me a little bit about your commitment through those thinner times and, and those challenging days? Did you always know that this was the road uh, for you and what kept you going? No. And I think anybody that says that is, is full shit. Yeah. I think, uh, it, you know, you know, being, being fear and being scared is, is human yeah. and, and doing, you know, and being able to like change your plans or, or just be adaptable to whatever's going on is, is, is a fucking survival skill. You know what I mean? Uh, my, my thing was always that if I don't have a record out, like if I can't walk into a store and buy my own record by the time I'm 25, then I'll figure something out. You know what I mean? But, and fortunately that record came out, uh, four, four months after my 25th birthday. So, so I didn't have to. Aren't you glad you didn't say 24? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there a song or a few songs that you're really proud of? Well, I, that's, uh, there's probably three different answers to that. I mean, there's, uh, if you mean as, as a songwriter, uh, or a guitar player or just as a band, yeah. then, um, I mean, they probably change all the time, but it's funny you mentioned hangups because, uh, 
there's a song on Hang Ups called 20 Cent Goodbye. Awesome and, song. and it was really, uh, I was not a Beatles person, I was a Stones person uh, mm-hmm. growing up. And, and I, but for that song, I'm just like, this needs George Harrison. And I really try channel a little, uh, little George Harrison on that song. And I'm really proud of, of what I came up with on that. Um, and then there's other things like on, uh, on Hello Destiny, there's a song called Hand Jobs for Jesus. And I'm playing uh, like six different styles in one song. And I'm really trying to sink my teeth into those. You know what I mean? So I'm really proud of that as a guitar player. As a songwriter, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm proud of Answers on the first record. John and I wrote that together. <laughs> um, as a band, God, there's a lot of different fucking songs. Uh, I think that that really depends on what they ask me. You know what yeah. I mean? When we, when we play live, Get Up, I really like. Um, when we're really locked in on that one, it's, it, it feels powerful. Uh, question off of the second record that when we're really tight on that, we just, I just feel like, you know, it just, it feels superhuman in a way. That's fantastic. I know, uh, you know, I spent the last three or four hours today in the studio recording a song and there's nothing like that feeling when you just come up with something that's like, <laughs> uh, it's a great feeling when you're in the middle of that right yeah. mode and you've nailed it. And it's just like, yes, this is it. This is what I want. Um, the question I have is yeah, when you're in studio, like For on a sure. song like Answers or you're writing a song like What questions do you ask or what are you pursuing when you're recording? What what approach works for this? You know what I mean? I love I love Prince and I love Slayer and I love uh, The Cars. Elliot Easton from The Cars is a huge influence on me um, in my playing in Goldfinger because he, you know, The Cars were a pop band and they were really melodic, but he never compromised being a great fucking guitar player and really playing. You know what I mean? Right. Where he played for the song and it was never like he was jerking off all over the song and being selfish, but he still played, really played. So, you know, I, I can pull from, from all those different kind of influences and then and that's what really gives me a chance to stretch and, and bring different things to it. And when I'm in the studio, what I'm actually recording is, is it in the pocket and does it feel good? That's really as simple as that. You know what I mean? Once, by the time I get to the studio, if I haven't figured out my parts, I should be in the studio. So at that point, it's just a matter of execution. Gotcha. Can you talk to me uh, for a minute about what Southern California meant to you as far as the bands you're touring with, the, the influences you got to play off of both, you know, getting influenced by them and also motivating other bands. What does that, you know, that part of the world mean to you? Because you, you've been all over the world playing music. It, it's <laughs> crucial. It's 100%. That's an excellent question, actually. Hush! My dogs are, my dogs are trying to cool it. Yeah, I mean, you grew up in L.A. and, you know... Mexican culture, especially, is hugely influential. I mean, I'm always hearing, uh, you know, growing up, I was hearing salsa music and uh, and the oldie station, K Earth and KRLA were big. Yeah, KHJ. I don't know if you've seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh yeah, great film. It, well, th- it's accurate in that when I was a kid, that radio station, KHJ, was always fucking on. Now mm-hmm. that movie takes place in 1969, but even in the 70s when I was growing up, so you were. I was always hearing uh, Sly and the Family Stone and the Beach Boys and, you know, so that was hugely influential. And because LA is so culturally diverse, you will hear uh, Chicano, Latino music, you will hear R&B and funk, and you will hear rock and roll. And so, you know, when I was a kid, Rick James and Van Halen were both as present in my life, mm-hmm, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, when I became a teenager and then it started being bands like Minor Threat and Social Distortion and JFA and, you know, all the skate punk shit that I was listening to, TSOL, all those bands, The Descendants, you know, and that kind of fast, aggressive shit that just feels like, you know, when you're a kid and you're out in the summer and you're skating or yes. you're, you know, playing football or whatever, and you, you get that sweat and you get that sun on you and there's that feeling of just being alive that's right. what i got from early punk that's that i got the same feeling from early punk rock you know what yeah. i mean so all of those things were hugely influential yeah fantastic i love that answer i grew up in between northern and southern california and I just think we're so fortunate in this state to have so many wonderful wonderful influences and then when you talk punk i just don't think another state anywhere can compare um, i think new york can new york absolutely can but in a different way you know what i mean mm-hmm. the ramones and blondie and and although they're a New Jersey band, I, I think uh, I think New York can still claim uh, uh, the Misfits a little bit, and you know, the Bad Brains, the CBGBs, and you know, uh, 
the dead boys were from Ohio, but they were still got their start in CBGBs. I think Nick and Al, you know, can go head to head on that. That would be a good debate for a, for another day. Uh, what are you working yeah. on right now? Bo- what's, what's Boston? Good? Boston tries to get in that argument. But they, they, they I don't ain't think close. so either. I don't think so either. No. <laughs> what do you got going in the fires right now? Uh, we're working on a new record. Fantastic. What what can we expect we, from it? Kind of settled into this ska category because I don't think of us as a ska band at all. I think of I mean, if you really listen to our records, maybe twenty percent, maybe thirty percent of what we do is ska music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but between here in your bedroom and Superman, I mean, those are our biggest songs, at least in the States. Yeah. You know, you're only, you're only as relevant as your last hit. And those are our hits, so to speak. So people do think of us as a ska band. Um, but I think of us as, as a pop punk band primarily. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of ska on the new record and there's some, uh, God, I almost, there's, there's songs with like a reggaeton feel, uh, John just sent me a new song called Dumb, and it really sounds like if Jellyfish were to play a ska song. I mean, you're from the Bay Area, so <laughs> yeah, you should know Jellyfish. Fun. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's really got that, that Beatles-y thing. Um, and, you know, there's some straight-up bass pop punk shit. You know, uh, it, sounds like a gold, it sounds like Goldfinger in 2020, you know nice, what I mean? Nice, nice. And man. I will say this, whenever John would historically send me a batch of songs, I would pick, like, three that I really liked, and then I'd fight with him about the rest of them. Okay. There's, there's not a whole lot of that going on. Like, I mean, I really dig most of these songs, you know? Nice, nice. I like hearing that. Uh, just and also, to... yeah. playing with the new guys, playing with, uh, playing, you know, Brett, having Phil and Mike Carrera, especially, mm-hmm. uh, they're so fucking talented. And, and it's really fun to hear what, what they bring to it, too, because they don't, they don't have the same history that John and I have, so they're not as maybe uh married to some of the old ideas that we have about what we're supposed to sound like and everything and oh, what that's they a cool thing. is really cool yeah i love that man i love that i was really surprised a few years ago when i heard the knife to hear mark hoppus uh and uh, i love that song well how did that partnership come along and and you probably go back pretty far with uh with uh, those guys i had left the band for a while and okay. i actually forgot that i played on any of it until i came back and i listened to the record again and i'm like oh shit that's me <laughs> so that's yeah it's gotta be a funny feeling <laughs> so that's a, that's a question for john i the only thing i can say about blink is i i love playing with travis on some of this stuff yeah and i uh, love i love that matt skiba i fucking love alkaline trio and so what he brings to that band is really cool too so you know i've 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 had less than kind words about that band in the past but again that's the past and they are really cool guys and i i dig what they're doing Dude, so totally uh, any 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 uh cross crossing of the gene pools with them i'm i'm totally cool with cool man hey thank you so much for for all these quality answers charlie paulson is the guitarist from goldfinger and has inspired me on countless records and countless live events check out goldfinger music on spotify and make sure you connect to their latest album when that comes out i'm danny hogger saying Keep your bandwidth stable and your friends close to you and music even closer. But keep your friends apart while we're six feet apart. What a fantastic place.